In this exercise, I want to focus on a running outline tool and the column tool. I'm using the traditional toolbar, but the graphics bar will perform the same functions with regard to creating the shapes. The stitch types will be an outline run and a satin fill. There are two main uses for the run tool. A, to provide detail to the design, and B, to connect one object to another. I will use both. The object is to create a design with a minimum number of thread trims. And to do that, you need to have a plan for the sequence of objects. Beginning at the bottom of the cup, I will work upward. My plan will be to create the saucer shapes, then digitize a run line to the outside handle, leaving the inside of the handle and body of the cup to join with the lip. Then a run stitch to the right edge of the lip and create a thin line and backtrack to give the run stitch some strength before completing the lip of the cup and finally the wisp of steam. Select the column tool and the stitch type and choose a colour. I'll just roll the mouse forward to zoom in. Be careful here not to have your first two points too close together or you may uh, create a thread break. So offset them a little which serves us well because we do want a point on this section of the satin stitch so 1.68 millimeters is fine so there were two left clicks and because this is an even arc I'll just do two right clicks in the middle and a left click and another offset left click at the end and we should get a, a fairly um, regular shape there and almost true now we we need to reshape here we've just missed the object at that right hand end so I've got my reshape tool up I'll right click on the line on the vector line and just drag down so we're a bit closer to to the real shape so we've got a bit of a distance or a gap between both of those sections now I'll hit the escape key which will neutralize that object or deselect it I, I then have to select the tool again and we'll do the same thing now this this curves a little more complex so we'll need a few more input nodes so these are right clicks right clicks and be careful to to put these nodes as near opposite each other as you can because remember they the uh, that determines your stitch direction you don't want uh, big long straggly stitches you know you don't want this point back up here you want it back opposite so these are all right clicks these toolbars out of the road right click right click and left click then hit enter I'm pretty happy with that shape now I'll select the running stitch tool this is the the other reason for running stitch we're going to connect this object to the outside handle so it's a left click to begin and right 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 we want this to run fairly well down the middle of that black so this stitch is going to be covered up it's just a, a connecting stitch as I mentioned now if I hit this, the um, space bar it should toggle me back to my input A or my column tool it saves me dragging the mouse back up to the tool so it'll toggle the space bar will toggle you between the two uh, tools that you're currently using so a left click and a left click to begin again a right left clicks again H brings up the reshaping tool again and I'll just drag that node I'll create another node and drag it up okay so we've got a better looking shape there I think that's fine that'll pull in a little that's good so select the tool again and click click try and digitize with as few input nodes as you can you're going to get a, a, a cleaner shape and a better curve the tighter the arc the more clicks you need to make I might have to realign this it's getting very close to the edge of that satin stitch and um, it may 
uh, expose itself when when this if there's any movement in the fabric when you're stitching so just move this back into its normal location at least my normal location and a couple of left clicks and I'll hit enter I'll just with my select tool if I hold the number two down on my keyboard it will allow me and and left click it will allow me to select the the hidden eye uh, the hidden line or the the next layer of, of um, stitching H again on my keyboard to bring up the reshape tool and I'll just drag that I now need to select my running stitch tool again and left click right click right right and I'll just get to that point and left click and I'll end that object right there I'll zoom in to get closer to my work and then I'll digitize another running stitch so this running stitch is to provide detail and the previous one this one here is just a connector so I select that piece that I've just digitized and I'll use the backtrack tool to come back so now my cursor is here at this point where the white cross is I can now change back to my input A tool and begin digitizing this column so it's right click a couple of left clicks to begin with now I'll roll my mouse back to zoom out so I'm getting a, a bigger picture all right clicks now that looks pretty horrible there but you'll watch when I click again here it'll pull that line back closer to where it ought to be so we still need to do a bit of adjustment and I'll finish off with a left click and another left click so P the letter P bring up the pan tool which uh, and I can drag the um, the artwork and the design back to the middle of the screen now with my reshaping tool I'll click on that outline right click which created a round node and I'll just drag that into correct the shape now I'm going to hit escape to neutralize everything I'm going to left click on this is my travel toolbar I'm going to left click on what I call the three tulips and that'll take me to the beginning of the design. Now I'm going to right click on the scissor icon which will identify any trims in the object or in the design and there are no trims. Uh, we'll talk about connectors a little bit later but uh, what that's telling me is that I've got the sequence correct and uh, each object is within a certain distance of each other so the end of the first object is within say two millimeters of the beginning of the next object you can see a bit of a problem here I'll just zoom in and pick this object hit H for my reshaping tool right click on the vector line and just drag it up and another one here okay select the tool again and left click left click right click right click right 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 and a left and a left and hit enter so check with my travel toolbar again left click on the tulips which takes me to the beginning of the design and then right click on the scissors so it's gone right through there without a thread trim it's going to thread trim between the cup and the the piece of steam the wisp of steam so let's have a look at that connector value that I was talking about a minute ago I'll select this object and come to my connectors in the object properties and after the objects finished I want to use jumping stitches to get to the next object and I want you to trim if we're moving more than two millimeters so I'll just zoom in there and just to demonstrate this if I was to change that value to say 12 the trim disappears but of course we don't want that because it, it's too big a gap so I'll bring it back to two mil 
the trim reappears. And we want to make sure that if we're trimming, that the tie off that happens before it leaves this object occurs at either the, the same distance or a smaller distance. So it's now selected at, at one mil. And so there's a tie off in there. You can see that little uh, single stitch there. Okay, so it's basically how I would digitize that object. I hope that helps. So the, the point of this exercise is to plan your design and use the running stitches to connect objects that um, are separated from each other. So there's this part of the source, the, the saucer, and that first part of the handle, they need to be done in that sequence, but we needed to put a running stitch in here to join them up and we needed to put a running stitch here to uh, meet this little piece of outline stitch that we put there. Remember the backtrack tool which is conveniently located under the running stitch now. So right click, turn my drawing off and turn my true view on. So that's your view toolbar is this one here that's T for true view. And I think that this will look fine. Those, those stitches here are going to pull a little uh, apart a little. And I think there'll be a nice gap in, in between those when you stitch that uh, design out. I hope that helps and you, I hope you found it interesting. Thank you.